All right, guys, I'm so excited to show you Visual Masm as of today. Today is Saturday, March 11th, 2017. What you're looking at is the current um, version as of today. I've been working on this for, you know, today a little bit. And um, I just wanted to give you another quick peek um, on Visual Masm, the current version. This is planned for version 2.0. So if you like, uh, you can download this this version that you're seeing here from the GitHub repo. So grab it and let me know your feedback. Uh, provide the feedback down below or just let me know otherwise. Um, if you watched my previous video I just published uh, today also is uh, why I'm doing this. Uh, why uh, create a, an IDE for assembly programming? And you can read up all the details why, and I have some reasons in, reasons on visualmasm.com. You can read uh, why assembly is still an awesome language uh, to learn, especially if you want to become a great programmer. Um, once you know how to program in assembly, I think it makes you a whole lot better on the understanding of the internals of the computer, how powerful it is. Even when you compare the original 8086, uh, 1976 to today's uh, Intel processors, um, it's still absolutely cool to program in assembly. And I, I want to make this easier for, for as many people as possible around the globe to still do this. So there's no reason why uh, you only have to use a high-level language such as uh, C, C++, Delphi, Java, etc., uh, I'm talking about um, the uh, fascinating uh, opportunity to, for you to have absolute control over your computer, meaning uh, there's no compiler between your assembly code and the CPU itself, meaning you have full control uh, of what you're going to create, how you're going to create it, and what algorithms you're going to implement, how those algorithms are executed, uh, it's just that absolute freedom to full control uh, to do anything you want. Whereas with any other language, you are limited by the compilers on what they will tell you or force you to, to program in a certain way, especially if you're using third-party libraries with your, with your high-level language. So this is where the problem starts, right? So in today's uh, program, programming world, uh, most folks do this with high-level languages like C or C, not even C really, it's Java, C Sharp, and then a whole bunch of scripts, uh, scripting languages or interpreted languages where I don't honestly never feel comfortable using scripting languages. Uh, I really like the raw, like the raw power of uh, a truly compiled language. And so uh, even C itself is considered high level when you compare it to assembly. So it is just absolutely fascinating. I wanna hopefully get this excitement to you and the way I think I can do this is one, the first step I want to do this is creating a somewhat decent IDE that makes this pleasant to work with, with today's uh, UI design styles, the aesthetics of the IDE. I want to be able to um, not, you know, have um, my eyes bleeding when I look at the IDE. I, wanna, I wanted some insistence as, as you write the assembly programs. Um, but anyways, Enough talk. Uh, as you, what you're looking at here is the current version as of today. So what you see here is a very simple application. It's a Windows, uh, simple Windows form. So just to give you a, a, a quick taste of what it looks like, I press F9 and we move this into view here. So it is a simple uh, Windows app. If you look down here on the on the output. The executable itself is about two kilobytes in size. It doesn't do anything, uh, but what just happened is I pressed F9. It will, it will uh, assemble the, the source code and then essentially build the final executable. Uh, I'm running Windows 10, 64-bit, but uh, if, if you look up here, uh, I'm simply creating a 32-bit assembly application. So I'm going to close this and. Um, one of the new features or some of the new things that I wanted in the old one but I never had time is now what you see in the lower right, which is a, a, a function list. If you double click or right click, you can do that. If you double click on it, it will jump to the to the procedure. 
if you um, interested in the labels that are inside the assembly source file you just click on the or double click on it and it will jump to the labels it's kind of convenient uh, so I like this one of the other things I implemented just the last uh, few days ago was um, something like say you want uh, this equate here I double click it left double click and it will highlight where this uh, where this text of block is being used it's kind of helpful when you when you have stuff that's all over the place and you want to see where it's um, with highlighting these words uh, where it's located in your source file uh, you can pretty much highlight anything you double click on and by just double clicking and again it will go away anyway so the current IDE is fully usable you can create uh, new applications um, 32 bit, 64 bit, and MS DOS right now. Uh, I haven't done the Windows DLL yet, so um, the templates I'm, I'm going to work on later on. Right now, I'm worried about there's some functionality still missing, like uh, if you look at this here, control space, the the code lookup, and the colors messed up. I need to f I need to continue with that. The editor itself, the colors and this and the themes. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit how to change this. Say I want to create a new application and um, I want to add a new 32-bit application here. I double click it and it will add it to the current group here on the right. And if you notice, um, there's a bunch of uh, features you can do per group, uh, per project, project group. And then you have different types of projects. This could be a 32-bit Windows application, a 64-bit Windows application. Let me do this right here. You can add a new project and I add now a 64-bit right here that's the basic template for it so in this uh, project group on the project explorer here on the right you can have one too many projects going on at the same time many times you probably uh, create executables or parts of an executable like a dll but you want to manage all, all these projects in one cohesive group that's why i created this this group concept in the project explorer so if you noticed, um, if I let me move this out a little bit, if I double click on a, on a source file, like so, you'll see that the current project that's highlighted here in orange means that's the active project. So when I press F9, now it's going to ask me to prompt. I'm going to save this and then prompt. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, I have some some errors here I need to fix this uh, but you know, this actually shows you uh, this is not you know perfect but if there are is mistakes in your source file it will uh, visual Mazen will take the the output that Mazen gives here doing the assembling process and then just highlights it where uh, the problem is and then you can try to solve this it's not perfect but uh, it's it's a first step in helping you assembling your your source code files so let me jump back to the to this one here. So so you see it's pretty easy to create a new project. You can rename the group. You can copy the file path. It's kind of convenient. Show it in Explorer where it's at. Get a DOS prompt. Anytime you want to just go straight to the DOS prompt and see what the information is on the on the command line. You can rename, save the project group, etc. Basic stuff. Uh, the project itself has a bunch of things you can do. You can, of course, you can execute it, you can assemble and build it. Uh, same thing, DOS prompt, copy path. You can add new files to a project, depending what type of project it is. You can add a new assembly file, like so. And you see, you just added it. Or you can do things like saving, renaming, basic stuff. If you click on the options, of a project so it will tell you what type of project it is by the way the all this information here on the project explorer the group the projects is stored externally as json text files so you can even edit these files with any text editor or with the visual masm itself so the information you get for a project is several things uh, i don't want to go into the details right now because uh, it this should work fine because I imported from from the previous Visual Mason version, um, you can add a bunch of uh, options, compiler options. I mean, uh, not compiler, uh, assembly options, uh, exclude, include, 
etc. So you can explore that yourself when you download it. Now the files itself, you have some options to remove from the project, save, basic stuff, delete. Okay, so that's creating a new project. Uh, what's more interesting? You have basic editing capabilities, of course, nothing fancy. Uh, I may add more functionality to for the editing itself over time, depending how are things going when you know when I create these applications. Um, searching is also basic. You can find stuff. You can replace it. You can toggle bookmarks. Uh, then the view. I don't have the welcome page yet in there simply because it wasn't really needed at the moment. I just want to get basic functionality done so 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 you and I can start developing quicker. Uh, project options is the same as you right click on a, on a project. Run is the same. Tools, um, let's see what we have. Uh, tool tips I didn't include yet. File locations are very important is Oh yeah, so the first time you run Visual Masm and you download it from the GitHub repo, it will prompt you to scan your hard drive for where your Masm is located. There's two options right now, but the the Microsoft SDK, uh, I don't think it's working when you run the setup wizard here because it's too large. Uh, I haven't had time to fix this, but for now, just grab the Masm32 uh, assembly and you're good to go. This will be automatically populated for you. So that when you run Visual Masm the first time, it will prompt you with the setup wizard, this one here. And it will go step by step. Uh, so that's, and then, oh, of course you can, I included and externalized the skins, which means you can modify the look and the feel. Uh, it's not, uh, I'm not finished with this yet because the code editor here you see is empty. So it the code editor would allow you to change the colors um, on the actual editing part, but the skins you can change now. So you can go through these, you can check them out, different types of skins. Uh, it's depending which one you like. You can even modify then the hue, uh, saturation and brightness, brightness. You can reset to the default, which is this darker theme. So this is one of the things I wanted a, a darker theme. It's more pleasant for, to the eye, at least for me especially when you work uh, in the evening uh, or when you get tired, uh, it's it's uh, a little easier on the eyes. Uh, but you can change this with the theme. So let's say, what, let me show you what this looks like if you change it to a brighter uh, theme like uh, Windows 8, let's say, like that. You see that? It's not the reason why you, this is not good yet because uh, of course you see this highlighting on the assembly um, keywords. This doesn't match uh, the, a lighter theme, so that's why the code editor will be in here so that you can darken the keywords and the comments, um, uh, the directives, etc., etc. So uh, again, I didn't do this yet because it wasn't absolutely necessary right now. Let me just reset this. Yeah, so now it's. Uh, yeah, it's still it's not perfect here. As you can see, it's still messed up. Anyways, um, if you start it again, it will be fine. That's about it for now. It's it's usable. Uh, it's enough usable so that you can assemble and run your applications. Uh, like I said, it's not it's still work in progress. It will take a while to make it polished. But um, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Just. Uh, just the way it's pleasant enough to use. And then um, hopefully we can start uh, creating these Windows applications and I'll show you what I'm doing uh, basic from basic applications, not just Hello World, but some practical applications that you could explore. And I'm, I'm, I really wanted to go into uh, socket programming, um, being able to communicate to uh, um, a web service backend, maybe that's exposed as a, as a REST endpoint. And uh, I this is where I want to go, where maybe you can create these rich applications, uh, extremely powerful in performance, and then extremely small in size. But the ultimate is that you have absolute control of what you create. That's just, abs it's just super fasting. I just love it. It's, um, it's really cool. 
you can't beat it. Now, what's of course, what's still missing in visual miasm is the actual visual part, because right now you're just looking at the assembly code. So um, the visual part at some point will come in when, for example, here on this project explorer here, if I right click and I want to add a new type, say other, and this is where it gets interesting, right? If I create a dialogue, which means um, it could be a dialogue box itself, or it's just a simple Windows form. When I, when you click on this, uh, I, I I really want that the drag and drop where you can drag the Windows components like a button, a list box, a uh, checkbox, and so on visually on here. And then in the background, it it would create the the resource definition files. Uh, so the key thing is when you create a visual form is when I, when you have a button, for example, you double click on the button and it it should create the, the skeleton behind the scenes for that button so that you can write the um, the assembly code what happens when some when a user presses the button so that visual portion is not there yet I don't know when they will happen but like I said uh, this is uh, uh, quite a bit of change from the first version because I wanted to I wanted to clean up some things I had in the first version and you can check out the code it's on github repo and just keep checking it and when I have time I'll I'll try to improve it uh, so I want to get this done as soon as possible because or done enough so that you and I can start uh, in those assembly programming and just enjoy the absolute power and um, I'll probably add in more resources and videos over time and it's probably easier to show you in a video than than via blog posts uh, I don't have a whole lot of time. Usually I'm I'm super, super busy with my day job. Uh, so anyways, hope you like this uh, quick uh, uh, preview of what's happening today. Anyways, I'll uh, see you later. Bye.